Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. I've been uh, promising a program on purple martins. This is the time we're really looking for the scouts to start arriving from the south. And we know that birds like martins that are so dependent on flying insects, whenever they arrive really early, they definitely run the danger of intersecting extended cold snaps, uh, and, and especially in the month of March. March is a very unpredictable month weather-wise here in the Midwest and it, it probably wherever you're watching from. Uh, and whenever these birds are faced with really cold, uh, real cold weather and the lack of flying insects, they run the danger of uh, starvation, dehydration, uh, you know, uh, hypothermia, every, they, they, it, it's, it's hard on them. And Martin landlords find dead purple martins in their houses this time of year whenever we intersect these bad stretches of weather with these birds returning really early. And remember these scouts that are returning early are the older adults, so male or female, usually males, but females too. And they they come in to get to claim the the prime nesting spots. And so people start um, opening up, you know, one door or one opening on their Purple Martin houses when they hear them start uh, calling. Uh, and we watch the migration maps really closely as to where they're being seen. And right now they're, uh, this past week, they're down along the Missouri-Arkansas border, which is about as far north as there were sightings. And now that'll increase. And when the wind's coming out of the south, we'll see more sightings. But the program is about what you can do to help martins uh, that get here and then there's a cold snap of weather. Um, there's two things that they're concerned with that people uh, have come up with pretty ingenious ways to help them. One is feeding them. Now, for a flying insect, that get or for flying insects that gets difficult. Can you go out and feed uh, the the martins? Uh, you, you, well, people do. People go out and they really start by. Uh, the martins to flying around, throwing uh, insects up in the air. They're dried mealworms, live mealworms, uh, crickets. Uh, people go and buy crickets. Uh, people will cook eggs and uh, break the, the egg up into small pieces and throw egg up into the air. And they train their martins to catch these things. I've got a customer who lives real close to the store here who uses a slingshot with crickets. He buys a tube of crickets and he go, and he's trained the martins. He slings the, the crickets up in the air. The martins swoop and grab them. And so he's helping feed them. Now, when it comes to mealworms, mealworms are, you know, <laughs> pretty sedentary. So uh, when it comes to a bird feeder, martins are never going to come down and eat out of your bird feeder, your, you know, with the other birds and the seed and things. But you can put out uh, the mealworms. You can put out uh, uh, crickets in them. Uh, you can also, some people use, uh, they use crushed oyster shells to help them with the calcium this time of year. And what they have to do is they have to rig up a tray high up in the air. It helps that, that to be up, and maybe not as high as the Martin House, but pretty close to it, up in that level, and get them used to coming in. And they'll land in there and they'll eat the mealworms. And a lot of people with crickets, they'll actually tear the back legs off. I know that sounds pretty pretty gross, but it, uh, it, it according to a friend of mine who is very, very um, involved with feeding reptiles, he says you should take the back legs off because they can actually get stuck in the reptiles' throats. And I'm not sure that's a big a danger with, with Martins, but it, uh, it, you may want to do that whenever you're, uh, if you're going to try this methodology, and that is getting food up to them. Now, the other part of this is trying to uh, help keep them warm. Uh, the, uh, on these really, really cold nights. And now, uh, if you have an aluminum box, which is pretty much all we sell, we have plastic gourds, but our, our Martin houses are all aluminum, which are great for conducting, uh, transferring heat. And so people will use uh, bird bath deicers. They'll also use uh, light bulbs. They'll also use uh, hand warmers. Uh, they, they'll actually put them in. But what they do is you put them in a compartment in the aluminum box and then you try to kind of close off the, the box so that the martins can't get in that particular compartment. And of course you have to have electricity and as long as you have a long extension cord and wrap that around it or if you have electricity run out to where your martin houses are, uh, people do this year after year in and year out. They often have this so they can uh, help their martins out. And some people, instead of actually putting them in a compartment, 
they'll actually rig up so they attach the, the bird bath deicer to the bottom of their house. And that way the, the house warms up, the aluminum will transfer that heat, and the martins can, uh, can stay warm. And we see communal nesting that, uh, whenever the weather gets uh, really cold like this. There will be several compartments crammed into one one compartment trying to help conserve heat and to stay warm. So, and we also have this kind of uh, bird bath deicer that actually is it can, can actually be bent and slid into there uh, and, and used as well. But again, electricity is the issue. You have to be have electricity out to your box uh, somewhere close by. But you know, like I said, it'll black electrical tape around the connection, and it should stay it should stay dry and you'll be fine. But that way, but. Um, you know, if you're a dedicated landlord, you may, you may already know this, but this the people are very dedicated to their purple martins, and they want to help them out during bad stretches. And are we going to have any bad stretches this year? It's yet to be seen. Looks like the weather this week is going to be in the 50s, and and we may not get a cold snap this spring. One year we had 13 days in a row, I think, of uh, uh, sub freezing temperatures in, in late March, early April. We called it the Easter freeze that year. It was really bad. So it can happen. So if if, if you want to help the martins out, these are a couple of ideas that you might be wanting to do. So uh, great idea for a program. I know pe Purple Martin people are very dedicated. So send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come by. Let's talk birds.